Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Cormier. Good morning. Good morning. Boy, um, this is impressive so early. You know, I'm happy to see everybody again. Um, for those that were here last night, um, welcome again. And for those that just came in for this morning, welcome for the first time. Um, you know, so it's, it's, been, um, it's been a really, really, really uh, big year for, for Red Hat and for open source in general. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about today, today about, uh, about what we've done, what you've done over, over the last few years. It's been a big 10 years. Think about this. Look what we've done over the past 10 plus years. We, everybody in this room, Red Hat, the Linux community, we've moved Linux from hobbyist to mainstream. It was just 10 years back. It wasn't in mainstream yet. We've moved, we've moved RHEL to be one of the two dominant operating systems in the enterprise along with Windows, with Microsoft Windows. We've moved enterprise open source software to virtually every layer of the enterprise stack. And we've given real choice to our customers. I think that's probably, I think that's probably the most important element into all of this. More often than not, as they've, as they've decided to build to the next generation architecture cloud computing, they've done that on open source software. And a lot of that is on Red Hat as well. So I think that's very impressive in what everybody has done over the last 10 plus years. You know, and if you look, you look at what we've really done, we've changed the world. It's just 10 years we've changed the world. Steven Savage from Geek20 agrees. Together with you, our customers, and our partners, we've helped the world move into this new era of computing, which is, might not have been possible. Cloud computing might not have been possible without open source software. You know, it's been a really long time to get here as well. Um, Unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember a lot of this, but you know, way back, the guys at, at DEC and Sun and others back in the 80s, they never wanted us to be here. They never imagined a world like today where open source would play such a pivotal role. The reason why they didn't imagine that is because they had a good gig going. It was very, very nice for them and very profitable for them to lock all of us in from the hardware layer all the way up to the application stack. You know, the, the 90s began a revolution. And it, it really began the revolution with x86 of true horizontal com computing. That happened back in the 90s. But you know, our friends at Microsoft up in Redwin, Redmond, they couldn't let go of that 80s style computing. And instead, while well, hardware gave us that horizontal layer, they just locked us all in from the operating system all the way back up to the, to the application. Things started to get interesting, though, um, on the road to freedom in the new millennium. It's taken, it's taken 10 plus years, which really isn't all that time. But with RHEL, with, with, with the start as RHEL and JBoss and Red Hat Enterprise virtualization, as well as other open source products for the enterprise, we've really started to move up that stack. We're committed, we're very, very committed to continue on that road of progress and give choice to the developer, the CIO, the partner, and the customer. And as you will see this week, we are nowhere near finished on that road. Many of our competitors would like to bring you back to the 80s and 90s with the one vendor lock-in and proprietary software stacks and they would also love to extend that proprietary reach to the cloud. But as InfoWorld pointed out here, as a consumer, you must be very concerned on a strategy in moving proprietariness to the cloud. If you're not careful, you'll be stuck there for some time. But I also think that's the design point of some of our competitors out there. That is the goal of some of our competitors out there. So we must be careful. If I look at Microsoft over the years and their position around open source, I think they may even be seeing open source, the open source revolution as a driving factor in the technology from the road for the future. But you really have to look back a little bit. From 2001, when, to, when Steve Ballmer said out there, Linux was a cancer, to, to only six years later, supposedly now embracing open source, but 
of course, if it ran solely on top of Windows. To one year later, seeming to not want to have anything to do with open source software. To 2010, where Bob Muglia said, open source is clearly mainstream in the IT world. Seems like a very, very confused strategy to me. But I'll bet you their idea of open source software in the enterprise is very, very different than anyone in this room. And then there's our friends at VMware. I, I, couldn't go, I couldn't go a session without talking about our friends at VMware. After they take the entire world back to the 80s and 90s and lock you back in at the hardware layer, the, that's the most fundamental layer of the operating system with ESX, they come out with the Cloud Developer's Bill of Rights. And if you look at that, if you look at that, Great platforms enable great applications, but in the past, lock-in has often been the price for embracing platforms. This must not happen again. Really? <laughs> I think we agree with that. I'm a little surprised with that, but we, we welcome it if it's reality. Last time I checked, 90 plus percent of their products in the enterprise were as far away from open source software as both of our friends up in Redmond. Who knows? Maybe we'll see ESX opened up in the future soon. We'll see. The future is open. The future is open. It's very, very clear that the future is open. We've been building on this for 10 plus years. We open the next decade and the next millennium with opening that foundation that's been deployed by our partners and our customers in the last decade. As we move through 2011, as you'll see this week, it's no accident that the biggest wave in computing since the internet, cloud computing, is built on open source software. Much of it with Red Hat. That's what you'll see this week. You'll see our customers using it, deploying it, building on it, et cetera. But let's, let's take some time to look at the pieces that make up the Red Hat cloud. While together, each of these pieces is a very, very, very powerful piece of this, Together, they bring a solution for the cloud. Individually, each of these pieces also is very powerful in its own right. And it all, individually, many of these pieces are solving some of the biggest problems for some of the biggest companies and successful companies in the world today. Let's look at some of those pieces. The first piece is RHEL, and of course there's RHEL. As has, has been the model from the beginning with RHEL, we integrate the best of the best open source projects. From the kernel, to GNOME, to Apache hosted projects, we integrate this into a free and open release called Fedora. Fedora gets millions and millions of downloads and is run on with hundreds of thousands of permutations of hardware and software. It then moves into its first life cycle with RHEL. It's this process that makes RHEL as innovative as it is while at the same time being one of the most reliable and stable enterprise class operating systems in the industry. Only one of two in the data center today. It's that process that does it. The OS continues to and will play a key role in the move um, to the cloud. Don't listen to what anybody else is telling you. It plays a key role. Applications rely on it every single day and will continue to. IT world obviously agrees. From the data center to cloud to, or to physical, Red, RHEL 6 delivers consistency in the same performance. That's very, very important as we new, move into this new architecture. People are going to be running physical, virtual, and cloud. And that same predictability, that same performance, those same attributes will be key for that move to be successful. And that's what RHEL 6 is all about. IT world thinks that's important. Our customers think that's important. And we think that's important. And we know all of you think that's important as well. Next is JBoss. Not unlike the RHEL process, JBoss is built from the best of the best of many open source projects, from Apache to OpenJDK to Hibernate to Seam, all in JBoss.org. These are integrated into multiple sub-projects within the JBoss community. And after a hardening that comes, not unlike, not unlike the RHEL process, after a hardening that comes after tens of millions of downloads, 
We produce the products that become the JBoss enterprise platforms. While the, while the open source software middleware platform is key to the development and deployment of new, of new applications in the enterprise today, it is crucial. It is crucial as those, as well as other applications, are deployed to the cloud. Gartner, as you, as you can see in this, Gartner agrees with JBoss's presence in the, IT, in the IT world today. JBoss is one of the top three Java EE platforms along with IBM and Oracle. Pretty lofty company out there in just a short period of time. Next is Rev. The virtualization layer has become a key part of the operating system. Rev brings the next generation of virtualization layer integrated with the operating system. This is very, very, very important for our ISVs and IHV compatibility on certification. As I talked about that smooth migration to the cl cloud, this is one of the key elements that will make that happen. This level of integration enables that application migration from bare metal to virtualized use to private clouds to public clouds. Like all of our enterprise class products, this is integrated from the best of the best open source projects, from the kernel to KVM to libvirt, Spice, et cetera, one integration across into that product line. In a recent InfoWorld study, they thought that Rev had all the essential virtualization management capabilities needed for true deployment in the enterprise today, and they ranked it number two in the industry. More proof that open source software developments bring solid innovation quickly to the industry. Last year, we introduced Cloud Foundations, a set of product integrated with services to enable our customers and partners to begin to build their own cloud infrastructures, leading products in their own rights that I just talked about. Combined with the open source projects like Spacewalk and Condor from the University of Wisconsin, it enabled many of our customers to start to deploy the next generation of cloud ar architectures. This was the beginning of the Red Hat Cloud offering. We are very, very, very excited at this summit and today to announce the next product in the Red Hat family of products, Cloud Forms. One more building block to bring our Red Hat Cloud offering to the next level. Built in the same fashion, in the same processes as our other product lines from the best of the best open source projects out there. This offering, for the first time, will bring true infrastructure as a service functionality to the CIO for on-premise cloud deployments. We bring a lot to the market with Cloud Forms. It's the most comprehensive resource management across bare metal, virtualization, public clouds. It enables that the application on the cloud for complete application lifecycle management. I talked about that earlier. It's a very important thing. Dynamic imaging and template-based application stacks for the next generation of operational management tools in a virtualized and cloud environment. This is built on the same principles, as I said, with the same processes as our other product lines for the most comprehensive deployment for on-premise cloud computing in the enterprise. Secondly, this week and today, we're, we're, we're also very, very pleased to, uh, to announce a second offering today, something a little different from us at Red Hat, but I think that you will find very, very exciting. OpenShift platform as a service. We're bringing together all of, all of our products to offer this offering out into the world for the first true platform as a service offering. This, we feel, is the best platform as a service de de designed for people who are open source development developers, but more importantly, designed by people who are open source development developers. It has auto scaling capabilities, pay as you gr grow attributes. It has the richest frameworks and languages supported in the industry today and it brings consistency with enterprise deployments. Once again, a common theme of that consistency for the application of enterprise applications move to the cloud. This really complements what we've done in the past. I know you have a lot of questions about this. Brian Stevens, our CTO, will go into this in much greater detail tomorrow morning in his keynote. You can see, oh, I guess over here, you can see this out in the, in the cloud. I guess it's over here. You can see this out in the cloud. Um, in the cloud forum out here uh, all day. 
and you can go to openshift.redhat.com to get your own personal look at this. We're very excited about this. We listened to our developers and our customer base when we, when we designed and, off, and began to offer this. You know, in order to be relevant to developers, for any PaaS offering, you must offer a choice of frameworks and, net, and, frameworks and services that they need. It's not necessarily the frameworks of the past. It's the frameworks of the past for that application migration, but also a whole new set of frameworks that are out there in use by the developers of today. So we're launching that this with the richest set of frameworks available in the industry today. And one of the other key points that we talk about all the time, in order to be relevant to the enterprise, you must avoid lock-in. So we're leveraging our Red Hat certified ecosystems of RHEL, JBoss, and certified cloud providers. Along, uh, this along with Apache Delta Cloud Project, the Red Hat Cloud Forms, and of course the JBot, J JBoss platform, we think gives our enterprise class developers exactly what they need to ensure their applications will migrate to the cloud. We take advantage of the full power of open source software and we bring it to the cloud. It's a growing community of partners um, that enables us, us to come out with such a strong platform in the industry today. And as I said in the beginning of this talk, with our, with our community and our partners and our customers and all of you here, we literally have changed the world. From Microsoft saying Linux is a cancer, not just 10 years ago, to most clouds being run on open source software is something, you know, when I reflect back, is just completely amazing when I look back at that. We all have to be careful, though. We have to be very careful. Do not get distracted from the proprietary guys' move to the cloud. Let's not allow the, so the entrenched software vendors to bring us all back to the 80s and 90s style computing. It'll take us all together to make sure that doesn't happen. But with that, welcome to the new millennium. Welcome to cloud forms. Welcome to OpenShift. And let the clouds remain open. Thank you. I'd like to, um, I'd like to, I'd like to finish with uh, a short uh, video of some of our Innovation Award nominees. I think you'll see some real practice here in how this technology is, is in use today. Thanks again. Thank you very much.